Sarah has been amazing these last few episodes. They have even paid homage to the last, the last Naruto, the first original Naruto, where Naruto fought Raiga along with Neji and Lee. So it was kind of a, uh, it it brought back some memories about that arc because it was a it was a really good arc. I liked it, and it also gave some background. Well, not background. It also showed some more about how Kagura felt about the situation and how he's willing to follow Shizuma no matter what he does because Shizuma was the first person who accept accepted him for who he is even though now Boruto has, has accepted him and told him that his past has nothing to do with anything right now it's what he wants to do I'm sure a lot of a lot of you think he's just a brat I sort of did too but I can kind of understand why Kagura is like this. Given Kagura's previous circumstances, he viewed the world growing up much differently from Boruto, Sarada and the others. So he's been instilled with a type of thought, a thought process. It's a psychological problem with him. So that is why he follows Shizuma. He can't just break free of it immediately. And that is Boruto's job to to knock him out of it. It's just soccer punch him out of it. And that's exactly what he's struggling with right now. So we'll get to see how he evolves after fighting Boruto because we all know we all know at this point. Boruto is the son. He's going to be the son of Kagura and he's the son of Mitsuki. It's, it was mentioned in this episode. And he's he's just like Naruto, so he's going to change him in some way. I'm gonna blab a bit about the previous episode. However, I'm I wanna talk the most about Sarada versus the Lightning Blade Girl. That was really good. And I gave them props for that. So yeah, I'm going to babble a bit about the swords, the swords of the Seven Miss Ninja, and the previous episode. So yeah, in the previous episode, they got the Seven Miss Swords, and I just want to make a comment about those swords, the the Seven Swords of the Ninja of the Hidden Mist. Um, they're kind of weird in a way that these swords would not actually work well in real life, and that's the thing. The explosive bomb sword it, it's technically just a sword with a bunch of paper bombs wrapped up in it and I'm just wondering who replaces those after they, they explode are they just there perpetually or just they, are they are, do they just spawn there or something also the sword with the strings where do the strings actually come from and don't get me even started about that blunt blade like that's not that's just a hammer and a sickle right there. A hammer and a sickle. That's not a blunt blade. It's a hammer and a sickle. Or some... I, I don't think it's a sickle, but... Yeah, it's a hammer and a sharp object attached to it with a rope. That's all it is. Zabuza's sword and um, the Hidamekade Hida are the only swords that I actually see that would actually kind of work. And the Kisame's sword that sucks chakra. Chojo went in to fight these guys with a normal sword, just just bare, and they're mocking him for it, saying they could they can defeat him right now. This is the best ch chance without reinforcements. S but Chojo took their attacks. I honestly feel that Chojo just took their attacks to humor them and teach them a lesson. They these kids they're flinching and they didn't want to be cut. They have no idea what real war is like, and that is what Chojo is trying to show them that that's not actually what they want. But they insist that that's what they want when they don't actually want that. And they're just taking out their frustrations on, on Chojuro for, for making the village a tourist attraction. Which essentially just makes it a better place than it was before. But also he, he raised the presence of the bad ninja or the ninja who gave the Hidden Mist a bad name from back in the day. And I think that was a very good move. Because even now in today's world, a lot of people want to re remove monuments that represented of people who represented bad things in the past, like slave owners and people who who prepped for slavery, that kind of stuff. You could say it's the exact same thing. It just it just puts out the wrong image about the village to the other villages. All of this is to maintain peace. And even though Chojo did not want to go and fight those kids or kill Kagura, he felt as if he had to as the Mizukage, even though I think he was a bit misguided, and even the previous Mizukage actually saw that, but she didn't try to question him because it was his decision. 
Boruto and Sarada came and actually changed his mind about going there as the Mizukage. On another note though, holy shit, Iwabe comes in and he actually knows how to use his sword. I only thought he knew how to use that hammer thing and some ninjutsu, but that was actually pretty surprising. I also liked how Inojin and Shikadai caught Mitsuki in dealing with bad business with Suigetsu in a back alley. So yeah, they're lucky it was just Mitsuki and Mitsuki, Mitsuki likes them. But yes, back to the best part of the most recent episode, Sarada versus the lightning girl, the girl with the lightning blade. The girl with the lightning blade, Kiba the Fang, is actually the daughter of a character that appeared before in the Naruto series, the original Naruto. His name was Raiga Kurosuki and he was, he was a guy who was obsessed with funerals and carried a kid on his shoulder. So this actually paid homage to one of the, one of the good arcs after the Naruto vs Sasuke fight in my opinion. It appears that Raiga abandoned her and uh, abandoned her, her mother because he didn't know that it doesn't seem like Raiga knew he had a daughter like Naruto killed him before he even knew he had a daughter and the woman despised him for leaving and it turned it seems like she got abused by the mother because the mother was angry because of it because she resembled Raiga so much. She was having some PTSD flashbacks during her fight with Sarada and yeah that's what it basically implied. But differently, Sarada is using copy jutsu, something that Sasuke never used to an extent besides on Lee at that one point just before the tuning exams. She uses the Sharingan quite masterfully in this episode. She copies the lightning girls, the mist girls, lightning balls, and also her thunder guard, thunder armor. And I didn't think Sarada could do many of those things at this point, and I thought her chakra would deplete faster than she could have actually won this fight. She also used Genjutsu and that was very surprising because everyone thought, like I thought that Sarada was, would just be demoted to a Sakura and it's turning out that's not going to be the case. I really hope that's not going to be the case. She's learning new techniques, she's copying techniques and she's even using Genjutsu, the mark of a true Uch Uchiha and she even won this fight with her Genjutsu. At some point when they were struggling with their thunder armor clash, Sarada put her in a genjutsu and the, the girl with the lightning blade did not realize after, until she it was already over, that she was under a genjutsu. So props to Sarada for that. It was great. There's also something I want to point out that Sarada said at the end of the fight before she collapsed. There's not a single parent who doesn't love their child. That's what I, what I believe. I can assume that that's what she gained from her experience with Sasuke. She thought Sasuke didn't love her and it, it did turn out that Sasuke did love her and that's why she thinks that. But sadly Sarada, I don't think that's how it works for a lot of people. There are parents who definitely do not love their children in any way and it's a sad reality but I guess that's what she believes in a kind of way and that's, she, she wants, she wants the lightning blade girl to just stop bitching about her parents. It's what Boruto is trying to tell Kagura right now and I'm assuming the next episode is going to be heavy on the Boruto versus Kagura fight and hopefully we'll see this plot progress a little more. It doesn't seem like this arc will be long as I thought it would because of the opening. Chodro is already defeating, had, uh, has already defeated like half of them. We'll see how they take this. Anyways, that's it for my review of this week's and some of last week's episode. If you like the video, leave a like, subscribe, and leave your comments on the episode.